Welcome back folks. So in this video, I'll conclude the NAS build and I'll talk about a few things such as creating data sets, the encryption that I've used, the power consumption of the NAS after it's completely built, how to enable more power savings by allowing the hard drives to spin down, the permissions, and I have a lot to talk about that, and then setting up emails for your NAS to get any alerts in email. So let's get started. So before we begin, there is one thing that I configured on my router, and that is I have assigned the NAS a fixed IP address. The other thing that I did is I also changed the host name of the NAS from free, free NAS to NAS box. Now once I had the system up and running, the first thing that I did is I just I created a few volumes. So I have two volumes, a backup volume and a media volume. The backup volume consists of four one terabyte drives and the media volume is two one and a half terabyte drives in a mirrored configuration. And the backup drives, of course, the four drives are in a mirrored uh, configuration. The other thing I want to talk about is the data sets that I have created for these volumes or on these volumes. If you want to do any kind of snapshotting on your volumes, I would recommend you split your data into data sets because you can individually manage snapshotting or de deduplication of individual data sets. And then you don't have to worry, worry about doing an all or nothing option uh, at, at the volume level. So what I've basically done here is I have two, I've created two data sets in the backup volume, wherein one is the backups volume. Yeah, I, I know the naming is terrible in here. The backup volume will contain incremental backups from uh, my workstation. And then the, uh, there is another data set, which is the documents data set, which, is, which, which will be just a straight robocopy from my workstation onto NAS. Now, if you think about it, they, if I have incremental backups, I really don't need snapshotting enabled for these because the incremental back, backup itself, in itself is, is snapshotting the data that I have on my workstation. Whereas the documents which are straight copy from my machine onto the NAS will need uh, some sort of snapshotting because I need to have a version history just in case something happens on on the machine uh, on my workstation and i didn't realize it so for example if on my workstation let's say a couple of files get corrupted and if i just do a copy over i'll be replacing those good files on my nas with the bad copies of the files and that's that will be a big issue so just in case that happens if i have if i have enabled snapshotting i will still have access to my older or older version of the files, I can recover them as and when necessary. I don't need that functionality for backups. So I'll turn on snapshotting for documents, but not for backups. And that, that is what would work with. The other thing that we've done is uh, when you create data sets, you can also assign quotas for each and in each and every data set. So in this, in, a, in this case, I have assigned about 800 GB for my backups and about one terabyte for my, my documents. Once I've done that, I also have enabled encryption on all those volumes. Effectively, what that means is if by any chance my NAS or any of the drives get stolen, the whole disk is encrypted all the time. So no matter what I do, I don't have to worry about data leaking out. But if you do that, there is one very important thing to remember is now you have one a single point of failure and that is the key, the encryption key that you have used to encrypt the drives and if you lose that key or if the key is compromised then that's it uh, the whole encryption falls apart then the data is inaccessible so the first thing I did when I created the encryption is I created a passphrase on that it's just basically a password to the encryption key and once I do that I downloaded the key and saved it in a safe place so just in case if the keys on the disk go bad, I can use the downloaded key and recover the volume. The other thing to note is every time when you have an encrypted volume in FreeNAS, you will have your volumes locked on the first, on, on the on boot. And the first thing you need to do is you'll have to go ahead and unlock these volumes to access those volumes. And now 
once the volume is unlocked you would see all your data sets and the volume and these can be accessible from the window share as well before moving further i would again like to emphasize that back up your keys and keep them in a secure place because if you lose your keys for encryption you lost all your data that is it folks see you next time